Hello everyone and welcome to the Speculative Wildlife Research Center where we reimagine creatures and monsters from all realms of fiction through the lens of speculative biology. Today we will be looking at the Hillichers from the video game Genshin Impact. Hillichers are somewhat humanoid, goblin-esque enemies that, quite interestingly, are capable of harnessing different elements when fighting as well as using elemental slimes, those classic balls of jelly from countless works of fantasy. That means, in the process of researching the Hillichers, we will also be taking a dive into slimes and elemental magic, so get ready and let's see how all these elements fit together in a biologically plausible way. And thank you, Praetorian Rex, for suggesting this one in the comments. Remember, all of you, to keep placing your own suggestions in the comments below. Also, if you're enjoying our videos, please consider supporting the channel on Ko-fi, link available in the video's description. And, as always, I will be giving some design and biology notes at the end, so please stay if that is something that interests you. Now, without further ado, let's get started. As notable as the history of mankind has been in regards to harnessing the forces of nature, using what surrounds them for their own purposes, today we meet two other creatures that found their own way of doing so, as effective as it is astounding. The first of these is a creature that has found itself at odds with humanity quite often, being strong and smart enough to be a real problem. Healy Charles, scientific name Prosopithecus melakaites, inhabit mainland China and the surrounding areas, tending towards temperate and colder environments. Having followed an evolutionary tendency towards bipedality, which allowed for better mobility, hillichers soon reached their new habitat. Most of their skin is covered in short dark grey fur with only certain areas such as the feet, hands and chest being completely bare. As hillichers grow, a dense mane will form around their head, neck and back, acting as a signal that they are healthy and strong individuals, a useful message to send whether they are courting a potential mate or competing with another tribe. The only part of their bodies that deviates from this dark color scheme is their white face, which contrasts with the rest of their body in order to allow for easier communication through facial expression, a very important thing for hunting social animals. In modern times, we understand hillichers to be descended from non-hominid apes, being close relatives to gibbons. However, before this understanding of the evolutionary history of our planet and the creatures that inhabit it, it was believed among human nations that shared their habitat with hillichers that these creatures were in fact human beings, who had been punished for sinning by being turned into inhuman beings. The humanoid appearance of the hillichers gave rise to this idea and the lack of communication between the species allowed it to go uncontested for a long time. Hillichers, after all, do not have a vocal apparatus as developed as that of humans, meaning both species communicate through very different types of vocalizations, many of them completely irreproducible by the other species. Some specific humans and human groups have managed to communicate with these creatures, albeit in a very basic form. Sadly, this has mostly been done to utilize the hillichers for less than noble purposes. Hillichers live in small tribal societies, advanced enough for the construction of crude tools, shelters and even smaller amounts of clothing. The role of individual hillichers inside their society is highly dependent on their age, with juveniles being in charge of menial tasks and anything that does not require too much skill. Mature adults, being bigger and stronger than juveniles, will train themselves in using crude weaponry and partake in hunting, 
raiding and defending their settlements from invaders. Mature hilly churls will take advantage of their imposing frame to intimidate other creatures, and even wear protective masks with horns and exaggerated features to increase the effect. Elder hilly churls, weaker and smaller compared to adults in their peak, have a role as priests and mages in their society. They will often also have a role in leadership and decision making, but the stronger, younger adults will ensure their power is never enough to threaten the warriors of the group. The religion of Healy Charles is built around the elements of nature, those which, according to the Healy Charles, make up the world and everything within it. These elements include the rock and soil that make up the world itself, the plants that grow on it, the water that makes all grow and the air all of them breathe, but also the fire and ice that make the extremes of the world unlivable and the lightning that strikes from above. The Hillichur consider these elements to be divine, but their religion is not exclusively symbolic. Instead, they connect with the elements through the slimes, slugs belonging to the family Magulimax, easily identifiable by their bright colors and the patterns on their skin, meant to warn predators against trying to feed on them. Round and huge compared to other species of slug, slimes have been able to grow and lose some of their gracefulness still avoiding predation thanks to a particular adaptation. According to the religion of the Hillichur, slimes are a concentrated form of the elemental energy around them, which, interestingly, has a kernel of truth. Slimes have formed a symbiotic relationship with specialized bacterial cells, which absorb a diversity of substances present in their environment and transform them into compounds that are useful to its slime host. The slime, meanwhile, will provide the nutrients necessary for the bacteria to survive and self-replicate continuously, but will also produce transcription factors that will halt the replication of these bacteria, stopping them from reproducing more than would be healthy for the slime. Through this process, Species of slime have adapted to defend themselves from predators, their bacterial symbionts helping them by synthesizing toxins that will produce a burning or paralyzing sensation on contact. Compounds that either help plants grow, providing food for the slime, or cold-inducing compounds that halt the growth of harmful organisms in their environment, creating protective mineral coats or toxic mucus and even producing methane that helps their host float in the air. Hillichurls will seek slimes through their habitat, even digging to find those that hide underground. They will take advantage of the compounds produced by the slimes, either in their natural state or by having the elders extract and purify their active components in a surprisingly sophisticated manner creating a diversity of potions and concoctions using these compounds and the slimes themselves in a variety of rituals and even using them as weapons should they need to defend themselves. Warriors have also weaponized these compounds by rubbing their weapons with the toxins produced by the slimes, which will make even the lightest scratch incredibly painful and dangerous. Sometimes, however, the most simple approach can be the most effective. Certain Hillichurl, in the heat of the battle, will simply throw the slimes at their target and allow them to do their thing by themselves. Hillichurl tribes will often devote themselves to only one of the elements, and will dye their skin and mane with the color they consider best represents the element or in more extreme cases, with dyes made from the same compounds they extract from the slimes. This, however, is only done by the more extremist among the Hillichurl, 
as prolonged direct contact with the slimes and their symbiotic bacteria can be extremely hazardous. Even hillichards will know to avoid the same elements they worship and stay far away from places they deem have too much elemental energy, for even as they worship the elements, they understand them to be uncontrollable forces of nature. Indeed, hillichards who spend too long in close proximity with slimes may become infected by the very bacterial cells that provide the same power they crave. While the tissue of infected hillichurls will secrete the same compounds produced by the slimes, this is far from a blessing. As mentioned before, slimes constantly produce transcription factors that halt the excessive reproduction of their symbiotic bacteria, but hillichurls lack such adaptation. Elemental bacteria infecting a hillichurl will reproduce out of control devouring nearby cells in order to continue their own biological processes, and this illness will slowly corrode the very flesh of the hillichurl. While some among its group will adore the infected individual, believing it to be now closer to the elements, the pain and slow degradation brought by this elemental cancer will drive the infectee away, to eventually die by its lonesome. And that's it for Speculative Biology look into the hillichurls and their symbiotic slimes. It took me a while to get this episode done, and that was because I am, in no way whatsoever, familiar with Genshin Impact. That meant I had a lot to read and unpack before even getting started on the Speculative Biology side of it. But the idea of these humanoids and their relationship with elemental slimes and elemental powers kept me going, as it was a very interesting idea, and the nature of elemental magic is something unlike anything I've done on the channel so far. Many comments have asked for ideas that would require me to reinterpret a magic system in a biologically or scientifically plausible manner, and this video really helped me begin bringing another semblance of magic to our videos. With the magic worked out, the inspiration for both creatures came quite easily. A gibbon is a non-hominid primate, meaning it lacks a tail, and lives in an area where it could very easily expand northwards towards the habitat of this creature which, given that the setting of Genshin Impact is too wide and is inspired by too many countries, I decided to base it on China, the country where the game was made. The slimes from this game, meanwhile, worked well enough as slugs, given their simplistic but clearly solid body especially when compared to more watery slimes. The hardest part about this episode was trying to do a little bit of not biological speculation, but societal and cultural speculation, which is not really my area of expertise, but it was still a fun thing to do, similar to our past video on dwarves. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and remember, if there's any type of creature you would like me to give the speculative biology treatment in the show, please sound off in the comments below. Thank you all for watching, and see you next time on the Speculative Wildlife Research Center.